Hello, and welcome to Lease Queries Accountants Angle, a podcast series where our experts answer your most burning questions regarding accounting topics and upcoming changes. My name is Emily Fish. I'm a product accounting manager here at Lease Query and your host for today's podcast. Today, I'm joined by Jason Parker, an accounting solutions manager and CPA here at Lease Query to discuss the risk free rate practical expedient. Jason, thanks as always for joining us. Let's get started. If I'm a private entity, where can I find an appropriate risk-free rate to use? Yes. So with the risk-free rate, and you mentioned private entity, I think it is important for us initially to point out that the risk-free rate expedient is only available to non-public entities. So yes, if you are a private entity, Really, the most common way to find the rate is by just looking at the U.S. Treasury bond rate schedules. You'll just want to make sure that you find a rate that matches the term of the lease that you have. But other than that, it really is as simple as just finding the publicly available U.S. Treasury rates to apply. Oh, so that seems a lot simpler than I anticipated. (laughs) Are there any downside um, considerations to evaluate when electing this policy? Yes, so there are some downside considerations to think about, but to your point earlier, yes, the idea here is to create as simplified of an approach as possible for private entities to apply uh, the discount rate. But one thing to think about is the rate itself, right? If you use the risk-free approach, you'll likely find the rate to be smaller than the incremental borrowing rate that you would apply. So that means that you'll have an increase in the actual liability value that you calculate at present value. So with that higher liability balance, you may want to evaluate any financial ratios that the business applies to, to see if there is a material impact on the business as it relates to those increased liability values. Now, a couple other things too, right? The higher the liability balance, you may find yourself classifying these leases as a finance lease as opposed to an operating lease because part of that lease classification test is comparing the present value of those minimum lease payments to the fair value of the asset. So the higher the present value, more of a chance that you might have a finance lease, which then does also impact certain ratios. Now, also for any private entity that plans to potentially either uh, maybe merge or become public themselves, um, when you do become public, you would actually have to go back and restate your lease liability balances, utilizing an appropriate rate for public entities. So if there ever is a plan in place or if there's ever a chance, you may wanna consider passing on this expedient just due to the inherent risk there. So really the risk-free rate expedient is designed for organizations that are smaller private entities that really have no plans on ever reaching that public sector. All great things to consider, Jason, thanks. Let's talk about the application of this rate. Um, Do we apply it on a lease by lease basis to the entire portfolio? Can we pick and choose who gets the rate and who doesn't? How How do we do that? That's a timely question as the boards have just recently met to discuss this. Now, I do wanna point out one odd thing that they've mentioned is that when we think about the requirement in the standard to apply the implicit rate Uh, whenever that rate is available, they have actually come out and stated that that is true, even if you do elect this expedient. So if you have a lease, even if you choose to elect the risk-free rate, if that implicit rate is very easily determinable based on the lease information, you would need to still use that implicit rate. However, as we often discuss, most organizations won't have the information they need, such as the fair value of the asset under lease, So most likely you will be able to utilize the risk-free rate, but now moving towards, is this lease by lease? Is it by asset class? Is it by the entire portfolio? Previously, the boards did require you to either elect this for the entire portfolio or just not at all. But after some discussions with users who have actually applied this guidance early, it started to make a little bit less sense to say, 
use a risk-free rate on some material balances, such as real estate, if an organization had a larger volume of leases on the equipment side. So what they've now stated is, yeah, now we're going to allow an entity to elect this on an asset class by asset class basis. So most commonly an organization will say for our material leases, such as real estate, we'll likely identify an incremental borrowing rate to minimize the liability balance we're calculating at present value. But for our more immaterial leases, such as equipment leases, we'll still be able to utilize the risk-free rate, even if we choose not to use it for real estate. So. Well, thanks so much, Jason. And thanks to our listeners for joining today's Accountants Angle. Remember, you can submit your questions for upcoming podcasts and our experts will share their insights. Don't forget to tune in in two weeks for our next topic.